I'll start things off with a personal favorite, Indian naan bread, so tender. So I've got three quarters of a cup of warm water and I'm gonna test the temperature on my wrist. It should be just above body temperature. So basically, if you feel a little warmth here, you know it's the right temperature. I'll put that in a large mixing bowl. And now, for a bit of tenderness and for great flavor, half a cup of yogurt. It can be full fat or even fat free. I'll add this to the bowl as well. Now for the yeast. I'll add two and a quarter teaspoons. And that's for flavor development, but also to get that stretchiness in the naan we love so much. If you're using a large jar of yeast, once you've opened it, you need to store it in the refrigerator. Now for the naan bread, I'm using all-purpose flour. I'll measure two and a half cups into my bowl. And I'll put all but about a quarter to a half a cup into my mixing bowl. And I'm gonna work this remaining flour in as I'm kneading the dough. Now for half a teaspoon of salt, and I'll add the salt on top of the flour. Salt can actually kill or even temper the activity of yeast. So you don't want them in direct contact at the beginning of your mixing. The last ingredient to add, two tablespoons of vegetable oil. Just grab a wooden spoon, mix it until it's blended. You can see it's a gloppy mess right now, and that's the way it's supposed to be. I'm gonna put in a sprinkle more flour in the bowl. Now that it's basically formed a ball, I can turn it out onto my work surface to knead. So now I'm kneading and pulling in the flour and this process of pushing the dough away, rotating it and pulling it in is developing the proteins in the flour. Basically your sense of touch is your guide as to when to stop adding flour and when to stop kneading. If the dough no longer sticks to your hand and pulls away, then you know you've added enough flour. Just need a little more. I tend to knead for about three minutes with this recipe and I've got a nice smooth surface to the dough. My hands come away free, so now it's time to let it rise. You wanna cover the dough so it doesn't dry out, and this takes about an hour to rise up. So about the time it takes to make a really good curry, start chopping your vegetables, and this will just rise away, and after an hour, it really does double in size. So now it's time to roll out the naan. So a little flour, on my work surface. And as you start handling the dough, it will deflate. Now, if you've seen non bread cooked, you know no two pieces are the same. We're not trying to achieve precision here. It can be kind of rough, loosey goosey. And I'm dividing this into six pieces. So I get six nice sized flatbread. No pre shaping, just leave them rough like this. You want it to look rustic and homemade after all. And with a rolling pin, just flatten it out to about eight or nine inches across. And that's, I would say, about a quarter inch thick. You wanna make sure your pan's really hot, high heat before you start cooking your flatbread. And the flatbreads take about 90 seconds on each side and not a drop of oil or butter in the pan. While this is cooking, I might as well roll up another one. Oh, look at that bubbling. Just another 90 seconds on this side, and you can see how easy it is. You roll a bread, you cook a bread, you roll a bread. So there's the blistering of the bubbles on the other side. And I'll get my next one going right away so the pan doesn't sit empty. And then the final step before you're ready to serve your naan is to baste it with a bit of melted butter. And a little sprinkle of sea salt on there. And then you tear into that bread. Oh.